All right, today I'm going to report on a couple things that are very important that will lead up to a peace proposal uh, with Israel and many that uh, is going on right now. Number one, this uh, report is coming out of Ynet News. And the report is that top U.S. officials to mull uh, greenlighting Israel's annexation plan. And as you can see from the picture that uh, Jared Kushner will be there, uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo will be there, and of course... Jared Kushner will be there, but uh, more importantly, President Donald Trump will also be in attendance. They don't know exactly when he'd sh he'll show up, but they're saying he will be involved in this meeting. And this will all take place on July the 1st, or sometime in the area, I believe. But the article is indicating that uh, it will start uh, July the 1st. So again, whether the Palestinians are going to take uh, part in this situation, or at the last moment come back to the table is anyone's guess now. It's been reported that King Abdullah of Jordan is trying to get Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas to come back to the table, but uh, no results yet. But I believe as we get closer to this July 1st date, something's going to happen one way or the other. You know, it's my belief that the Palestinians are going to have to find their way back to the table or lose out in territory and a tremendous amount of money that has been planned to be, to be given to them uh, not only by the United States, but also the uh, the modern Arab world. And speaking of the modern Arab world, Iran has sent a message to the Arab states, so that means that they're worried about the normalization of ties between the uh, modern Arab world and Israel. Enough to, to say this right here. Let me read the article. It says that Iran lashed out over the weekend against the reportedly warming ties between Israel and the Sunni Arab states in the Gulf advising key regional players to resist a reproachment with Israel and comparing it to playing with fire. Now, this message was stated over the weekend by an official by the Islamic Re uh, Parliament of Iran, and he further stated that uh, the normalization with the Zionist regime will not help the security of Bahrain or Saudi Arabia. In other words, he's trying to let these particular countries know who are trying to... Uh, normalized ties between Israel, that even if Israel is in your corner, that's not going to save you if Iran does decide to attack you. But he, and what he said in the end, it says, according to Knight's News Agency, he also said that if the Zionists repeat the mistakes of the past, they will face a greater defeat. So there, you know, there's many that might that say that uh, this Israeli uh, United Arab World normalization of ties, peace treaty, whatever you want to call it, is never going to happen. But when you have Iran come out and indicate that they believe it's possible that it could take place, and they're warning the modern Arab world not to get involved and not to do this, there's a strong possibility that this peace, uh, at least between the modern Arab world and Israel, is going to take place. And you know, that's one of the things that the Bible did say. It didn't say anything about the Palestinians, but it did say that in the end, in Daniel 9, 25-27, that there would be a peace with many with Israel during the last days. And I believe that some form of peace will take place between the modern Arab world and Israel. And frankly, it may include others as well, such as the European Union and the other nations that are a part of the quartet, which could be Russia and uh, I think China is the, the, the other nation. Now, whether or not they'll actually be involved is unknown, but it's possible. But if Iran didn't believe that this is possible and it could happen, they would never have come out and stated this warning. And, you know, at the same time, Jordan's King Abdullah would have never come out and said the things that he's said and also mentioned that he's trying to get uh, Mahmoud Abbas to come back to the table if he didn't believe that there's a strong possibility that the annexation could take place on July 1st. Now, of course, it could come down to that the Trump administration decides to delay it till after the election. But right now, that particular uh, move is on the table. And, you know, it really comes down to what type of strategy that the Trump administration wants to administer before the election. You know, he would love to be the one who says that of all the presidents that have attempted, he's the one that brought peace to the Middle East. So that's that would be a feather in his cap. So maybe, in fact, he does want this to go forward uh, as far as possible before the election, showing that his dip diplomatic experience has paid off and he should be the one that uh, should get reelected, because if in fact he doesn't, that the gains that have been made uh, 
in the peace talks would not be completed if he were to be uh, uh, voted out. So certainly it wouldn't shock me if the Trump administration did go forward with the annexation and apply additional pressure on the Palestinians with a next step. And of course, I'm assuming that uh, President Trump and the Trump administration have uh, acquired King Abdullah from uh, Jordan to constantly be in the ear of Mahmoud Abbas to say, listen, you need to get back to the table or you stand to lose all of the Palestinian Authority and the state that could be created because little by little it's going to be chipped away. And before I go, there's one other thing that's also important that you should know that the United States has placed somewhere around 39 sanctions on the Syrian government. And this I learned from a Stratfor article. But the point of the article was that because of these uh, sanctions, this would further push Syria into the arms of Iran and uh, Russia. So don't be looking for Russia or for Iran to be leaving uh, Syria anytime soon. Both of these countries are in that country for the long haul. And last but not least, uh, Hezbollah has stated that the precision guided missiles that they've now acquired can reach Israel anywhere in their land. Now certainly that's a big step up from what uh, Hezbollah has had in the past and quite a significant range increase from what they've had in the past. So they have become a much more dangerous adversary in Syria and Lebanon for what I believe will be a devastating war to come. Now certainly that will probably include Iran, but as you know, the Bible does say in Ezekiel 38 that one day, Russia, Iran, Turkey, and a number of other Islamic nations will come down upon Israel to seek a spoil. And you can bet that Russia and Iran will use Hezbollah and their guided missiles to rain down terror upon Israel when this attack begins. Of course, there's one thing that you need to also remember is that In less than six months, uh, Israel has said that their laser technology that can strike down multiple missiles at one time will be will be activated and placed online a part of Israel's uh, defense missile apparatus. So uh, I'm not so sure how they're how many even even if they do have 150,000 missiles, they're not firing 150,000 missiles at one time. And according to reports, this uh, laser will be able to zap incoming missiles at will and as quickly as they're fired. In fact, as long as there's electricity going to this machine, it will be like a video game in which uh, missiles will be raining down upon Israel and this uh, laser system will knock them out of the sky as quickly as they're fired off. So I'm not really sure how much of a threat if in fact this laser system performs as uh, described that uh, this these missiles will play. But if this system's like anything else that Israel has created regarding missile defense, it's likely that it will be near 100% accurate. You know, the only question is, is whether or not Hezbollah, with all their missiles, can overwhelm the system. But, but Israel's pretty confident that's not going to be the case. So this is what you need to be looking for in the next couple of weeks. Of course, Israel is going to be wor- uh, working with uh, the White House to create a updated map of Israel. We'll have to see how the Arab world reacts to this. And if, in fact, the Netanyahu uh, administration does follow through with their annexation uh, plans. I hope it's not delayed, but, you know, there's uh, that chance that it could be delayed. But you should remember that many of the players involved in this simply don't believe that it's a hoax, nor is it going to be delayed. So that's what I have for you today. Uh, I would suggest that if you are not getting my videos at this point in time, Click on the subscribe button and uh, the notification button and also like the video. And if you get a chance, I would also ask you to share. And if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. Today may be your last opportunity. You know, 150,000 people will die today. The Bible says that the vast majority of them will end up in a burning hell. Once you get in that predicament, you can't get out. There's one thing you need to remember. Both heaven and hell is eternal. So I would, I would encourage you to, to uh, choose wisely. And you that are Christians, you need to copy my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. Go down to the description section of this video. Get a copy for your lost friend or lost loved one. I would recommend that you get a paperback a copy so you can physically hand this book to them. And they'll have it when the rapture takes place. So I hope that you'll, you'll take advantage of this. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.